This video is brought to you by Brilliant. For the last week or so, Sudan has been consumed by violence between the Sudanese army and a paramilitary group known as the RSF, or Rapid Support Forces. At time of writing, over 180 people have been killed, and on Thursday there were reports that the violence had spilled out into the Al Fashaga region, a disputed territory in between Sudan and Ethiopia. Despite calls for a ceasefire from both United States Secretary of State Antony Blinken and United Nations Chief Antonio Guterres, the violence shows no signs of abating anytime soon. So in this video, we're going to try and explain why fighting has broken out in Sudan, why it spilled out into Ethiopia, and how all this could further destabilize a region that's already on its last legs. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. So let's start by explaining what's going on in Sudan at the moment. This requires us to rattle through some Sudanese history starting in 1989, when al-Bashir took over Sudan via a bloodless coup. From there, he basically rigged the elections to stay on as Sudan's head of state for the next 30 years. His government continued the Sudanese civil war, a long-running conflict between non-Muslim ethnic minorities in the south against the mostly Muslim central government that ended with the creation of South Sudan in 2011. Soon after, he reignited the long-running war in Darfur, despite previous peace agreements. According to an investigation by the International Criminal Court, al-Bashir, quote, masterminded and implemented a plan to destroy the three main ethnic groups in Darfur. These groups being the non-Arab Fur, Masalit, and Zakhawa people, with a campaign of murder, rape, and deportation. In 2013, the UN estimated that al-Bashir's government forces had killed up to 300,000 ethnic Darfuri people, with millions more displaced. Al-Bashir was eventually charged by the ICC for directing a campaign of mass killing, rape, and pillage against civilians in Darfur becoming the first sitting head of state to be indicted by the ICC, before being ousted by the Sudanese military in 2019 and handed over to the ICC a year later. After ousting al-Bashir, the military toppled the government and declared a state of emergency, taking total control over the country. A deal was eventually agreed between the protesters and the army that promised a civilian leader to replace the military in November 2021 and democratic elections in 2022. But the military got cold feet and staged another coup in October 2021. The coup was led by General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, who basically heads up Sudan's military and is now Sudan's president, and supported by the Rapid Support Forces, or RSF, which is basically just the name given to the Janjaweed in the mid-2010s when they were partially incorporated into the Sudanese military after the war in Darfur. In a televised address, al-Burhan denied that he'd staged a coup, instead claiming that he had, quote, tried to rectify the path of the transition, and promised democratic elections in July 2023. This didn't go down well with the Sudanese public, the vast majority of whom wanted democratically elected civilian government, and triggered massive pro-democracy protests that lasted until early 2022. Unsurprisingly, the military responded by cracking down, killing hundreds of protesters and wounding thousands more. They also started reasserting themselves in political appointments, which forced Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok to resign in protest in January 2022. After months of more protests and negotiations between civilian and military leaders, the two sides finally agreed a so-called framework agreement in December 2022. Like in 2019, the military promised to give up power and enable a transition to democracy within two years. There was always scepticism that the military would keep to their word on that front, but the immediate cause of the most recent fighting is actually another part of the agreement which requires the RSF to be fully integrated into the Sudanese army. This was always going to be difficult, given that the RSF and the Sudanese army both have about 100,000 troops each, and has sparked a power struggle between al-Bahan and the leader of the RSF. Lieutenant General Mohamed Hamdan Degalo, who is also Sudan's current vice president. 
And, well, that's what the current fighting is all about. It's not motivated by any ideological disagreement. It's essentially just a pure power struggle between two factions within the Sudanese military. Anyway, the fighting began early last week, and both sides accuse each other of starting it. Most of the fighting has been focused in the capital, Khartoum, where the two sides are fighting for key civilian and military infrastructure. The RSF has been flying fighter jets over RSF positions, while the RSF has been mostly using heavy artillery to shell the Sudanese army. Estimates from the WHO on Thursday suggest that at least 330 people have been killed and at least 3,000 injured in the fighting so far, although the true figures are almost definitely much higher. Obviously, this is a tragedy. Not only have hundreds of people been killed, but neither group is supported by a majority of the Sudanese public. It's not like there's a good guy and a bad guy here. Both al bahan and Dagalo are deeply unpopular with the Sudanese public, and were supposed to hand power to a civilian government sometime in the near future, which now looks increasingly unlikely. On top of this, there's a real risk of the conflict becoming internationalised and further destabilising Eastern Africa. The Horn of Africa is engulfed by crisis. Ethiopia is reeling from the Tigray War. South Sudan is trying to negotiate a peace deal between its warring ethnic groups, and Eritrea and Somalia are basically failed states. There have already been reports that the Egyptian Air Force is actively supporting the Sudanese army, and that the Libyan army is providing supplies to the RSF. The RSF have also appealed for help from Eritrea, which intervened in Ethiopia's Tigray War last year, and the Sudanese army have claimed that, after the army moved troops from the border with Ethiopia to Khartoum, Ethiopian forces staged an armoured assault on al Fashaga, a disputed border region between Ethiopia and Sudan. Ethiopia's Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has denied the allegations, but the region has seen an uptick in violence since the Tigray War, and Abiy Ahmed's inability to control Ethiopia's various regional militias doesn't bode well. All in all, this is a tragedy for Sudan, but it also risks further destabilising the Horn of Africa, which has been in a permanent state of crisis for the best part of the last five years. These are all clearly huge decisions, but one much smaller, easier decision you can make is improving your skills and career prospects with Brilliant.org. That's because, while we all know that the promise of AI is that it'll make our lives easier, it's very possible it'll make our work lives more difficult, replacing some people and requiring different skills of others. Brilliant, however, is the best way of improving your STEM skills quickly and in a fun way, investing in your own human intelligence. That's because Brilliant has thousands of lessons, from foundational and advanced maths to AI, data science, neural networks, decision making and more, with new lessons added monthly. And by the way, these lessons are interactive and engaging, designed around principles of active learning, so there's no boring lectures here. That means that by investing a few minutes every day in lifelong learning, you can improve your skills and feel a real sense of accomplishment. You can try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days by clicking on the link in the description. Plus, the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks for your support and for watching TLDR.